and he's challenging us to get it done, which I think is more than fair, and he's earned that. Teams lined up ready to make offers for Damian Lillard immediately. They are already getting ready, waiting for the moment to happen. Player asks out. Typically, organizations accommodate them. I know what you're thinking watching this video. Oh my god, another video on Damian Lillard. Mike, it's only been two days since you last brought us an update on this. Well, guys, I don't know what to tell you. Damian Lillard just had a huge meeting with the Portland Trailblazers, and it changed everything. The thing that's funny about this video is you're probably looking at this thinking, wait, what was Damian Lillard's original decision? Because he seems to be flip-flopping a lot. And we're here to take you through all of it. So before we get to the content man free agency is four days away on the first day of free agency we're going to be announcing five giveaway winners to split a thousand dollars and all you have to do to enter is subscribe and turn on our notifications on this channel we're on the grind to 800 000 subscribers we're 20k away and if you happen to be watching my content every day maybe just do a little check to make sure you're subscribed now that we get all that out of the way cue the intro The NFL and NBA season are officially over, and I need something to hold me over until at least the NFL season comes back. So I've been playing prize picks for the WNBA and the MLB, and I've been fairly successful. It's a good way to get some extra action on games that I wouldn't really watch otherwise. I post my picks onto my Instagram story daily, and I've been hitting on a decent amount of them. And right now, when you use my promo code microphone, they'll double your deposit up to $100. Mike Chuck 1212. What's going on, everybody? Portland Trailblazers have consistently had one particular cycle over the past two years, maybe even more, but we're going to only cover the past two years. Damian Lillard would say that he's reconsidering his future with the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers would reaffirm their commitment to building a contender around Damian Lillard. They would then go and try to add solid role players in the offseason to convince Dame that they were committed to building a contender around him. And then oftentimes they would trade said role players during the trade deadline, and then they would finish finish with a horrific record in the West. This has been going on for a long time, but in particular, we're going to focus on the past two years. For example, during the 2021 offseason, the Portland Trailblazers had a remarkable offseason, trading for Larry Nance Jr., signing Ben McLemore, signing Dennis Smith Jr., signing Tony Snell and Cody Zeller. Yeah, that's not necessarily a squad that is going to win a championship with you, but ultimately, the Portland Trailblazers would regress mightily. They would decide that, hey, this team team clearly can't get it done and would make significant moves during the trade deadline. They would trade Robert Covington and Norman Powell to the Los Angeles Clippers for Eric Bledsoe, Justice Winslow, Keon Johnson, and a 2025 second round draft pick. This was a cost saving move because the Portland Trailblazers didn't want to pay the five year $90 million contract that Norman Powell had. In addition to that, they decided to trade one of their franchise cornerstones. CJ McCollum got traded to the New Orleans Pelicans alongside Larry Nance Jr. and Tony Snell. For Josh Hart, Thomas Sadoransky, to kill Alexander Walker, Didi Luzada, and a protected first round pick from New Orleans. They would eventually reroute Sadoransky and Alexander Walker into three team trade, and we get Joe Ingles that would never really play, a second round pick from the Jazz, Elijah Hughes. And in that press conference, Joe Cronin, the general manager of the Portland Trail Blazers, said that they really liked Joe Ingles and they valued his bird rights, meaning they intended on re signing Joe Ingles, but yeah, that didn't end up happening. Damian Lillard wouldn't play very much during the 2021 to 2022 season, and as a result, the Portland Trailblazers would get the seventh overall pick in the 2022 NBA draft. They would use that pick to select Shaden Sharp, a player that has tremendous upside and is an uber athletic guard. Damian Lillard once again teased the fact that he didn't necessarily know what his future was going to look like, but fortunately, the Portland Trailblazers were able to convince him to stay because they offered him quite literally a two year, $120 million contract extension, which means Damian Lillard is going to make more money in two years than Shaquille. Keel O'Neal made in seven years when he signed with the Los Angeles Lakers, although by $1 million. They would trade for Jeremy Grant. They would sign Gary Payton II. And then Damian Lillard would come out with a huge chip on his shoulder. He would play the best season of his career. He would average 21 field goal attempts per game and 11 three-point attempts per game, but he'd also average 32 points per game, seven assists per game, and five total rebounds per game, which is a good thing and a bad thing. You see, despite this, once again, the Portland Trailblazers finished with one of the worst 
worst records in the Western Conference, leading them to quite literally shutting down Damian Lillard at the end of the season, which meant that they were now playing for lottery balls. The lottery balls fell, they eventually got the number three overall pick, one spot away from getting Victor Webinyama. And this is where the drama would begin. Damian Lillard would say that the Portland Trailblazers have an opportunity to trade that pick for a player that could help them win now. But despite that, Portland had other plans, as they would select Scoot Henderson with the number three overall pick in the NBA draft. Not only a guard, but a point guard. Similar skill set to Damian Lillard. Scoot Henderson had this to say about Damian Lillard. I think Damian said just because I think we just kind of, we combine our games and it'll be over. You know what I'm saying? We kind of complement each other's games. We're, we're both fun to watch. So ticket sales go up. So on top of this, Portland wasn't willing to trade Damian Lillard at this point. Like they wouldn't even pick up the phone on teams that were calling them about Damian Lillard. So you would think, okay, either Portland is going to trade Scoot Henderson, which the New Orleans Pelicans are very interested in, or they're going to trade Damian Lillard. Common sense would suggest that when you finish with the number three overall pick in the NBA draft, you're one year removed from finishing with the number seven overall pick in the NBA draft, despite your star player who is at the age of 32 going going on his age 33 season, who's coming off of the best season of his career and is locked into a Supermax contract, you would trade that star player. It seems like Portland had other plans and we found this out as soon as the NBA draft started. Portland wants to keep building around Damian Lillard. They want to try to continue to make some moves here. Uh, I know teams who called Portland about Damian Lillard in, in recent weeks and this week and were immediately shut down. If he changes his mind, player asks out, Typically, organizations accommodate them. So this is Adrian Wojnarowski. Maybe he did some digging. Maybe his sources could be wrong. But no, we quite literally would hear this from the general manager of the Portland Trailblazers himself. Still see Dame in our gym every day or still meeting with Chauncey and I constantly is because he wants us to work. He was, he's bought in. He wants it to work here. And he's challenging us to get it done which I think is more than fair and he's earned that. So there was some cryptic stuff from Damian Lillard. You could say it's on purpose, you could say it's on accident. He was caught listening to a song called Miami on his Instagram Live, which, come on. If you're listening to a song called Miami on Instagram Live and there's a lot of speculation about you potentially joining the Miami Heat, we're gonna think one particular thing. You really wanna join the Miami Heat. There's nothing wrong with it. I think Damian Lillard being traded to the Miami Heat makes perfect sense. He would be the piece that could get them over the top to contend in the Eastern Conference. I mean, they made it to the NBA finals without him, but imagine with him. They already have a ton of depth. They could do without Tyler Hero and Duncan Robinson and some of their first round picks. It makes perfect sense for both sides, but according to Damian Lillard's agent, the music was a coincidence. Damian Lillard's not disrespectful. He's not an instigator, so he's not going to do anything out of character. There'd be no reason for him to do that. That's why he laughed in the video. It's just a funny coincidence that a DJ would put that on. So here's where it gets interesting because on one hand, you have Damian Lillard quite literally saying, I don't want to play on a young team. Dame Lillard has indicated, not behind the scenes, on the record, he does not want to play in a youth movement. Expectation is the Trailblazers use the third pick tonight. Teams lined up ready to make offers for Damian Lillard immediately. They are already getting ready, waiting for the moment to happen. Which brings us to where we are now. Joe Cronin had a meeting with Damian Lillard shortly after the NBA draft. Rightfully so. Damian Lillard is really not happy with the fact that the Portland Trailblazers actually decided to use the pick. According to this article from The Athletic, Sam Amick, for all the focus on the Trailblazers draft on Thursday with the widely held belief that Damian Lillard wanted them to trade the number three pick in exchange for a star level veteran as a way of dissuading him from asking for a trade, it's clear now that it was never quite that simple. A path remains, however narrow it might be, for him to be content with the Portland Trailblazers state of affairs heading into next season. There is some time left, all by not much, and some patience too, but the Trailblazers dire need to add elite talent remains. With Without it, these may be Lillard's last days in the City of Roses. As Trailblazers general manager Joe Cronin shared with the local media on Saturday, Lillard was expected to meet with Blazers officials after he returned from his recent trip to Paris. According to a source briefed on the situation, the meeting to discuss the next steps of the roster building process will likely be early this week. After all, free agency officially begins on Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, and there is much to ponder on that front. Which, by the way, the meeting happened. We're gonna bring you up to 
date on the meeting very shortly after, but I felt like there's some very important things in this article in regards to what Damian Lillard wants that I should bring to your guys' attention. For instance, yet while there are all sorts of shared enthusiasm about the additions of Scoot Henderson, Chris Murray, and Ray and Rupert, the source said nothing has changed about Lillard's strong desire to play with the kind of high level players that would make the Blazers contenders again. The youth movement, impressive though it might be, isn't enough. So what would it take to convince Lillard that Portland is still the place to be for the rest of his NBA days? Here's one solution that is known to be a dream scenario from Lillard's vantage point. Resign forward Jeremy Grant and add four-time all-star slash four-time champion Draymond Green in free agency. This is insane. I mean, <laughs> this is so wild to me. I don't think I've ever seen in NBA history a player say, hey, you know what's going to keep me on this team? If you could get me Draymond Green on this team, we will be contenders. A part of me could understand why Damian Lillard would want that. Because on one hand, you may be looking at Draymond's stat sheet and saying, hey, this player is great, but I don't think he's going to move the needle for a championship. I think Damian Lillard wants a vocal leader in the locker room that just shares his intensity, shares his personality, and has championship experience. I mean, we quite literally saw Draymond Green punch another one of his teammates in the face and then get him traded as a result of how passionate he was about the team. While Golden State is known to be extremely confident about Green re-signing, the price of his return is likely to be a point of contention. Enter the Blazers, who can make Green the unofficial savior in this sensitive Lillard situation, while giving him a chance to add to his legacy in a different jersey after 11 seasons with the Warriors, except for one massive problem. As is with the case of many of these scenarios, it would take some serious salary cap wizardry by Cronin to make it happen. While the Blazers have Grant's bird rights and thus can re-sign him despite being over the salary cap, they currently have no room to sign someone of Green's caliber, especially considering that he's likely looking for a deal in the mid $20 million range annually. There are sign and trade pathways to be explored and likely with a third team needing to be involved, but it's an implausible prospect to say the least. And again, all signs point to Green wanting to stay put. I mean, the Golden State Warriors quite literally gave Draymond what he wanted. At least that's what we're speculating. You didn't get along with Jordan Poole. There was questions about Jordan Poole's commitment to the game and how seriously he took it and he got traded for Chris Paul. There's obviously Pascal Siakam or OG Anunobi and the Portland Trailblazers attempted to trade for those players, but they weren't willing to give up the number three pick. So the Toronto Raptors weren't interested in parting with either of their assets. So like I said before, they did have the meeting that the article was specifying about and the results of the meeting are insane. According to Chris B. Haynes, the Portland Trailblazers general manager, Joe Cronin, issues a statement on meeting with Damian Lillard. I met with Dame and Aaron Goodwin this afternoon. We had a great dialogue. We remain committed to building a winner around Dame. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, the cycle is beginning. The Portland Trailblazers are about to say that we are going to commit to Damian Lillard yet again. Leave me alone! Ah! Chances are that they are probably going to trend more towards a rebuild because there isn't a lot you could do to make sure you're contending with Damian Lillard at this point. I don't think there's a single free agent that you could add that would make me look at the Portland Trailblazers and say, yep, that's it. They're contenders in the Western Conference. But at the same time, there's two other issues with doing anything to try to build a contender around Dame. One is your championship window is going to be very tiny. Damian Lillard is entering his age 30 season. Two, this is going to ruin the development of what is looking to be a very promising core. I mean, Scoot Henderson is a John Morant-esque type talent. I mean, hopefully without taking out guns out of nowhere, I mean, sorry, toy guns in strip clubs. That aside, the Portland Trailblazers could very much opt for an OKC Thunder or San Antonio Spurs-esque type of rebuild. You could have a plethora of draft picks moving forward and you could build your team around your young talent, focus on building your young talent, while also supplementing them with high-end role players via the NBA draft. And you could also do it while not paying much in luxury tax. I also don't think Portland Trailblazers fans would have a problem with that. I think Trailblazers fans would love to tune in during a post Damian Lillard era and just watch Shaden Sharp and Scoot Henderson really develop their games. I remember when the Los Angeles Lakers were building around D'Angelo Russell and Brandon Ingram and when they moved on from D'Angelo Russell, they brought in 
Lonzo Ball. I was watching the games. I really wanted to see how, what Julius Randle was going to turn into. I really wanted to see how Lonzo Ball would develop his game. Little did I know that his best game in a Laker uniform was going to be his second game in a Laker uniform, but I digress. In this particular instance, you have the opportunity to move on from Jeremy Grant, Damian Lillard, and Yusuf Nurkic. You could probably get yourself around six to seven first round picks for that trio. I mean, a bulk of it is going to be Damian Lillard. You could give yourself salary cap relief and you could really focus on developing your youth at this point. I don't necessarily see the upside here. And at the same time, I don't understand why Damian Lillard would even want to stay. Apparently it's because Damian Lillard doesn't want to play for a super team, which is so bizarre to me because in my opinion, a super team is what the Phoenix Suns are. I mean, we have to make a video on that, but the Phoenix Suns have two max contracts in DeAndre Ayton and Kevin Durant, a super max contract in Bradley Beal and Devin Booker. And they quite literally can't sign other players that are of anything of value to assist those players. I mean, they're working out Jabari Parker and Stanley Johnson for crying out loud. That's a super team. The Miami Heat have Bam Adebayo, who's homegrown talent, Jimmy Butler, who isn't on a Supermax contract, and for the most part, that's it. The rest of their players are primarily homegrown talent that they developed from in-house that support those players really, really well. You have Tyler Hero, who you could potentially trade. You have Duncan Robinson, who developed really well. He had a down season, but this past season, he kind of trended back up. Caleb Martin really started to develop his game when he went to Miami. It seems like every player that goes to Miami Miami ends up being the best version of themselves. And I think it makes a lot of sense for Dame to go there at this point. I wouldn't really count them as a super team either. I would just count it as a team. It makes a lot of sense to me. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think. Do you agree with Damian Lillard changing his mind once again from not wanting to play on a youth movement to giving the Portland Trailblazers more time? What do you think about the prospect of Damian Lillard chucking up 21 field goals per game while Shaden Sharp and Scoot Henderson are on the team? Do you think that's going to ruin their development? I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.